I shall not leave you nor forsake you. I will not abandon you, says the Lord, for I am with you. Yet in a little while I shall break forth upon the left and the right. I shall come forth in my power. I shall move and you shall be astonished and astounded to the depth and the width and the breadth of it. And you shall look and say, my God, this is greater. This is greater. This is greater than even we have thought. I shall come forth, says the Lord, and I will break forth upon you yet in a little while, but I will not forsake you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, today I ask you by your spirit that you come in your own special way and, and my God, open our understanding to the things of your spirit. God, you are on the throne. You are the, the one that has delivered us. You're the one that has set us free. You're the one that is the captain of the host. You're the one that, that wants to lead us in victory. And Father, we just pray right now for, for you to bombard and invade our thinking so that we start to think right. And for that, we'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. As we try to get our heads around the times we're living in, how many people will say we're living in very, very unusual times? We don't know what's up and we don't know what's down. We don't know what's right. We don't know what's wrong. So many opinions, so many things happening. For many, uh, people are confused. Confusion reigns in our thinking. There's so many thoughts, so much this coronavirus and things like that. When it first came on the scene, the fear that was put into the hearts of man. They said between 50 and 150,000 Australians would die from that virus. Actually, it hasn't even hit a, 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 a thousand yet. But that, those words are still in our mind. Those words penetrate our mind and it starts to bring fear and confusion and people are so scared. People are, don't know what to do, how to, how to do things. It's a horrible thing when fear grips your heart. Many times the thing that we feared, you know, never ever eventuated, never ever came to pass. But there's other things, if you continue to fear it, it will come to pass. There's so many people that have died with coronavirus that didn't die from coronavirus. A lot of people that have got different conditions and they put the name, the label on it. It's half the people don't understand or don't really know what's going on. But I want to tell you this, friend, that there is a war going on not only in the natural realm, but in the realm of the spirit. There is a war and the enemy is pouring out confusion. We've got today where, where I hear on television uh, somebody say, well, when my child is born, it will be gender neutral. I've never seen a gender neutral person in my life. It is not even real. When you're born, you, you are either a boy or a girl. But there, this stupid play on words and playing with our minds and saying things like that and all of a sudden somebody else says, oh, I'll do that too. And and something starts to grow and starts to develop. There's a, I want to say this, there is a war going on for the children of this world. And we the church, we can sit around and play tiddlywinks or whatever you want to play, or else we will be part of the answer. And part of the answer is when you allow the Spirit of God to get hold of you and, and, and do things in your life. Take those advantages. Take those things. You see, faith in God has been overtaken by fear and discouragement. Discouragement. The enemy is throwing everything he can at the church at this point of time. He's throwing everything he can at the church. He knows his days are numbered. We've, we've got to encourage ourselves somehow or other in the Lord and and realize that though the enemy might be doing this, that doesn't mean it's the end. Though he's pouring, he just knows his days are at the end. 
Jesus never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He watches over his word to perform it. He, he has made bold statements in this word. If you can believe, all things are possible. But if our belief system is, is eroded and we start to believe wrong, well, we're going to get a wrong result. I want to say, and I want to encourage you today to start to take advantage and start to break the strongholds of the enemy and start to destroy what he is trying to plant in your life and allow God to plant his word and the victory of the cross and whatever it might be. You see, because I believe that every person in this room has a destiny. You are not on this earth for nothing. Find your destiny and you find what God has for you. We have to fight fire with fire. You like that? You got to fight fire with fire. Don't just sit and cop it. See, there's scriptures in the Bible that, that we take and we use it when the Bible says, or turn the other cheek. I, I don't understand that sort of talk. Because you see, the Bible wants us to stand on the Word of God, not just to accept everything that goes on. We have to take stock of our own lives. We've got to have a look at our lives. What is the most important thing in your life? What is important to you today? What is your greatest treasure? What is your treasure today? What is really, really, really important now, today? A hundred years from now, it really won't matter. But right now, what is really on our heart? What really matters today? I'm just going to read some scriptures to you this morning and just believe for the Spirit of God to come. See, there was a lady I was with many, many years ago when I first, when COC had first started. And I was around at Clark Taylor's house and we we're looking at a garage or something that he wanted to build and he asked my advice about it. So I was there. While I was there talking to him out in his front yard, a lady pulled up in a car and she screeched to a halt. Door flew open and this woman distraught, so distraught. And she was just tears and yelling and screaming and carrying on. And, and, and this woman ran over. Mr. Clark said, what's wrong? What's wrong? She said, my mother has just been diagnosed with cancer. And I'm, I'm the rookie. I'm, I'm, oh man, that's bad. My eyes were sticking out like crab's eyes. Man, what, do, what do you do here? You know, man, this is, this is serious. And, and I remember Clark just called it to himself and said, Honey, what is the worst thing that can happen to your mother? He said, She could die and go to be with Jesus. He says, okay, that's the worst thing. Now, I, I know this lady. To my knowledge, she lived for another 20 years. I never, never heard of her passing away. But, but if we allow, allow fear to get inside us, it destroys us. You know what I mean? And it, it needs, What is the worst thing that could happen? What is the best thing that could happen? Well, she can live and stay with me. And, you know, a lot of our prayers are self-centered. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. And, and I never, ever forgot that time. And, and uh, it, it was really, a, really an encouragement to me. In Matthew chapter 16, And Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Isn't it an amazing thing how what I believe today, what's really, really important because today, you see, we, we can chase after things that really aren't all that important. 
We can spend, I, we used to hear, say this uh, little story, I used to say, well, I spent my health to get my wealth, and then I spent my wealth to get back my health. And it seems so stupid, really, but that's what happens. And people, you know, they, they just go after this goal of, and, and it's just it's going to perish anyhow. There's, there's no reality in it. I, I believe that, that Satan is trying uh, to take Christians out of our environment. This coronavirus, if there's one thing that it's done, and please, I'm not trying to say that it's not real. It is very, very real. And most surely some people have died from it. But I would guarantee today that if we really had a study, we'd find that most surely more people have died from suicide as a result of the pressure. Most probably there are more people that have died from normal uh, flu than this coronavirus. I'm not saying that it's not real. It is very, very real. Very, very real. But we've got to somehow or other put it in its right perspective. And you see, if, it, if, if because it's closed the churches down, and... I would say that our church has dropped by at least a third, if not more, in this time. Most pastors that I talk to are saying the same thing. They don't have to go to church anymore. It's just easy to sit at home and listen to a TV. But you, you won't get into the presence of God like we did this morning. You, you, won't, you, won't, you won't catch something. You, you perhaps won't be there for the for the word of knowledge or, or to catch the spirit of things. Yeah, you'll hear things, but friend, we, we need to be in the environment where God can speak to us and minister to us. See, I, I believe that more, more is done as we gather together in that corporate worship and praise than all the preaching in the world. Preaching is important, otherwise I'd be stupid. I've been doing this for 50 years. But it's not the most important. It's, it's, it's given us a bit of insight and a bit of understanding. But you see, if the enemy can take us out of the environment of the assembly, that's why Jesus, the Word of God says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, because he understands that something happens in the realm of the Spirit when we come together. It can't be done outside. But you see, if, if He can get us out of our environment, then we lose. You see, an egg was never ever meant to be scrambled. It was never ever meant to be fried. It was meant to be a chicken. But if you take it out of its environment, put it in one of those little cardboard boxes and put it in Coles or Woolworths or somewhere, it will never ever fulfill what it was designed to be. Over the, in the forest, I got very upset because of this noisy bird. But I found out later on that it, it was a, 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 not a, crow, a crow's baby. But what had happened is a crow had laid an egg. Another bird came and flicked the egg out of the nest and laid an egg in there. And the silly old crow hatched it. But this bird was well, a big bird. And it was sitting on the thing. Wah, 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 oh, and... And she, <laughs> that bird had those mother and father bird running their feathers off trying to keep food up to it. And the more they fed it, the more it yelled and the more madder I got. I got my Shanghai out one time. <laughs> but if see, if we... If we're taken out of our environment, which is faith, God's presence, God's spirit, the influence of the word of God, and replace it with logic, social enjoyments, 
man's ability, which I want to say this, is what Paul warned us of. He said, beware if anybody preaches another gospel. And I want to say this, if I can say, well, of course I can. <laughs> I'm up here. <laughs> Today, most of the church are listening to another gospel. It's a gospel of, of joy and victory and finances and everything's good. And You see, what happens then is when something goes wrong, your faith drops because, you see, you've been taken out of the environment and you've been placed in another environment where there's no faith and where there's no victory and where there's no hope. But you see, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God said, I will raise up a standard against it. I spoke to you the other week about this family, a beautiful family that, that looks like he could go to jail now. I don't know what the outcome will be, but a beautiful family, but there's false accusations and there's false things coming out from a man that is a criminal and a 16-year-old or 17-year-old girl that is very, very disgruntled. And they're just writing all these things. But if you remember, that's what they did with Jesus, the accusers of the brethren. They, they were falsely accusing Jesus. But he opened not his mouth. Because you see, he was in his environment where he knew that God before him, who could be against him? But we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. You see, if we get taken out of our environment, it's easy to say today, don't talk about the blood, people might be offended. Friend, we've got to hear about the blood because the blood will never lose its power. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, is what cleanses me, amen. It's what makes me whole. I've got to hear about the Holy Ghost. I've got to speak in other tongues because it's the power of God, hallelujah, that wants to flow through me. I've got to become obedient to the power of God, to the anointing of God, even though it might seem foolishness, even though it might sound silly. It's the foolish things of this world that confound the wise. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. The word. God watches over his word to perform it. If we understood the power of what God wants to do. But you see, if we've drifted so far away and we're over here, that even the hands of God are tied. Because of unbelief, because of unbelief and hardness of heart, God couldn't do what he wanted to do. There's got to come a fresh surge. How many people are ready for a fresh surge to come over your life? Come on, how many people really believe that we need to have a shake-up? Come on, give me a wave if you believe it. Let the devil see it. Let God see it. I need to change. I want to change. I want to be changed. From glory to glory is changing me. We've got to know who we are. We are children of God. We're, we're God's kids. Man's ability is another gospel. In the Christian church or, you know, if we lose our influence, we're like that egg. The devil scrambles us, fries us. You know what? The devil doesn't mind if you go to church. He doesn't care if you go to church. As long as you replace the things of the Spirit with the things of the world. One of the things that I've found is that the world has got into the church. The world has got into the church. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 it says this, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Look, I don't know what you got, whether you got a rapture theory. It was, you know, we're just going to be there tiptoeing through the tulips with tiny Tim and, and then all of a sudden, phew, there we go. Actually, I, I've, I've got rapture kits for sale. Yeah? You just stand on it, 
And when you hear the trumpet of God, you pull the lever and it throws your 50 feet in the air. After that, you're on your own. <laughs> but there's a, there's a deluxe model. It comes with a parachute. <laughs> I don't really know what it's going to be like in this end time church. I don't think it's just going to be beer and Skittles. I, I, I don't know. I, I would love, you know, just to get fluttered away. But it says in the end times, there's going to come perilous times. Times of stress. You know, one of the greatest Killers today is stress. What, what amazes me is that the, the football players and all these guys that are, that are making multi hundreds of thousand dollars and young guys in there, their biggest problem is mental health. Stress. Stress to perform. Stress to stay on the team. Stress, stress, stress. But, you know, you know none of these things takes God by surprise. He, he said, you know, know this, know this, that in last days perilous times will come. For men, and I haven't put all this down, I've just done some of the things. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Have, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away. Because they're preaching another gospel. They're preaching a different message. They've got a form of godliness, but there's no power. The, I don't know. I believe that there's got to come a surge of God's power again. And, and I don't know a better place to do that than in a prayer meeting time. I don't know a better place than, than, than you know, this morning as we're worshiping and as we're starting to sing those songs. And you, I don't know about you, but I could sense a, a surge of God's power come into this place. It wasn't just a good, nice, itchy feeling. It was a, like a surge of something that, that oh, gosh, like a bundi. This way, just wanted to lift your heart up to God and wanted to throw your hands in the air and, and just know that if God be for me, who can be against me? That God, you're on the throne. It doesn't matter if Palace thinks she is. But that's like a little flick. I used to be a flick man. One flick and they're gone. <laughs> One flick. One flick. I pray she gets born again. She's not my enemy. Devil doesn't care if you go to church as long as you replace the things of the Spirit with the things of the world. What, what really is important? What is it if a man should gain the whole world and lose his soul? What, what, is, what is most important today, this day now, There's a man that I, that I met in America and he was sharing his testimony with me. He said, Neil, he said, I was, I was talking to my wife on the phone, talking about making, you know, tonight when we get home or we'll go out for dinner and we'll go this and we'll do that and we'll do that and all these things that, that were on his thoughts and they were laughing and, yeah, we'll do this. We'll, we'll just have a good time. And all of a sudden he said the phone just went dead. Found out a, an hour later, a guy rang him and said, get to a television quickly, get to a television quickly. And when he got to the television, he found out that the building that his wife had walked, worked in had just been slammed into by, her, by the Twin Towers came down. His wife was tragically killed. You see, we, we can have all these things, but really what is important? What, what are the important things in life? Thousands of people today 
in this hour that you and I are living in, are in prison because of their faith. There are people today, pastors and, and leaders and that, that are, they hang them up by their thumbs until their thumbs rot off. They say that many of the, after you know, they, they survive it somehow or other, many of them, you, you shake hands and they've got no thumbs. Today there are children, boys and girls and wives that have been raped by soldiers and, and prison guards. You know why? Because they're Christians. Somewhere they shared their faith with somebody who dobbed them into the, mag to the, to the, to the, to the what do you call it, to the, their, um, their authorities. They get thrown into prison. Does that stop them? No, it doesn't stop them. It doesn't stop them one little bit. They became Christians. See, becoming a Christian doesn't place you in a bubble. <laughs> Very quiet in this Presbyterian church. It doesn't place you in a bubble. But the Bible says this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. It's not just easy street. There's an enemy out there. There's a war that's raging. War, war raging. Paul, he is a man that many times they stoned him and goodness knows what else, but he found himself preaching again somewhere else. I want you to have a look at the book of Acts chapter 16 with me, if you will. Sto these are all stories that we've read and talked about many, many times. And, and, and they're real, very, very real stories. What I'm just saying is we're living in, in end times. And because we're living in end times, there's, there, it's trouble times. And, and we've got to be able to follow after Christ. We've got to be able to not just because of, of perhaps we think that this is the way it should be and if it doesn't go that way, then we lose hope. We've got to be able to still walk through these problems and, and understand them that if God be for me, who can be against me? And this is, of course, Paul. Uh, there was a young girl there and he cast a demon out of her. And it says that they brought, and they brought them to the magistrate and said, These men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. Now you and I know that they weren't troubling the city. They were bringing life to the city. They were bringing hope to the city. They were bringing the word of God to the city. But this is uh, how the world saw it. This is what, the, this is what these people said uh, about it. These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city. I want this church to exceedingly trouble the Sunshine Coast. Amen? Exceedingly trouble them. So that even if people rise up and get cranky with us, many might get cranky with us. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods, and they laid many stripes on them and threw them into prison. And I'm, I'm thinking of this young couple while I'm preparing this, that are over there in Canada trying to help people, trying to give these kids that have been with neglect or whatever it might have been or however they found themselves in that environment, a nice Christian home and good food and good clothes. I know this family very, very well. And here they are, they're, they're doing the right thing, but... Somebody come up and said, this mob 
are exceedingly troubling these children. The magistrate gets mad and throws... Well, actually, they went to prison for 11 hours. The young lady was interrogated for 11 hours straight, trying to get her to say something wrong. They came... The police came in their car, in their cars, and in the middle of the day, and arrested them and put them in handcuffs and threw them into prison. Friend, this is this is end times, amen. This is this is it. We we, we what I, why I'm saying this is we can't sit around with our arms folded playing church. Because when this thing hits. Are we going to be ready? You don't have to get real excited about this. <laughs> I know what I'm preaching about is not easy, but we can't just sit around. I said it a couple of weeks ago where we're almost up to 50 people in our prayer meeting. Now it's down to about six or seven or eight. Friend, if we don't pick up our game, the enemy will run all over us. And that is not a negative statement, that is a fact. If we don't do something about the situation, nothing will change. If we don't rise up and, and believe and, and, and confess and, and do what God tells us to do and be the church, be this people that God wants to raise up, nothing will change. We know there that, that, that Paul and, and Silas are thrown into prison. Backs were bleeding. They were in stocks. And they started to sing hymns and psalms and started to worship God. And the Bible says that the, all the prisoners were listening. I want to tell you today, if I can liken it to this, there are many people that are imprisoned that are not in jail. You might have come into this place this morning and as Tom started to use the word of knowledge and started to pray, the whole purpose is to break that stronghold of pain or whatever it is around your life and set you free. They sang praises. They, there was an atmosphere that was built in this building, an atmosphere of praise, an atmosphere of, of, of worship. What, what I loved was the first song. It wasn't the musos that, that led us into worship. It was you that led us into worship. It was what was on your heart. Yeah, they were singing up there, but somehow or other, you carried that. You took us into that place of worship. Who knows what I'm talking about? Who knows what I'm talking about? Friend, if we don't change, nothing will change. If we just... Say, oh, well, praise the Lord. And for many, I don't care what political alignment you have. Some people say, oh, got another Labor government. Well, friend, I don't care what government is in power because the government was never meant to have the power. The church was meant to have the power. But if we sit around tiptoeing through the tulips with Tiny Tim, nothing will change. But if we rise up and become the church, become that people that God wants us to be, and we start to speak into circumstances and speak to the wind and speak to the storm and speak to the circumstances, I want to tell you things will change. I've been amazed at, 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 at the prayer meetings that we've been going to, particularly on the Tuesday nights, the power, the... the, the how do I put it? There's, what's, what's the word I'm looking for, Tom? It's like there's a, there's a, hmm? there's something there that, that, that it's like an unspoken thing. You just know that, that whatever you were doing there, it, it didn't go unnoticed. That God is watching and God is listening and listening to Tom prophesy this morning in a little while, in a little while. And I, and I believe that we're starting to build something. We're building something. 
Yeah, the enemy's having a field day too. Yes, he's slapping people up the side of the head. Yes, he's doing stuff. But I want to tell you something happening in the realm of the spirit that the devil has got no answer for. He's got no answer at all for what God is about to do and what God is about to release. And, and, I, and I believe that the church will rise and, and it, will be, it will be seen as a, as a powerful place. Amen. The church of the living God. The church, the church, the church. Stephen was a young man and, and, and uh, he was just loving Jesus and doing things and, and people got cranky with him. Because he was, somehow or other, you've, you've got, oh dear Jesus. You see, unfortunately we are so much natural and we see so much naturally. But somehow or other we've got to understand that we are more spirit than natural. And we've got to somehow or other break out of the natural into the realm of the spirit. We've got to break into that spirit thing. Here's Stephen. He's there and the natural people will get cranky with us. But Stephen was, was so full of the Holy Ghost, the Bible says. He just stood there. He said, you bunch of stiff-necked people. You've done this and you've done that. And Of course, we know that they stoned him. But you see, in the midst of all that, while he's there, while they're stoning him, he looks up to heaven. And he sees Jesus. Somebody was telling me a story, I don't know whether it was you, Tom, or somebody else, about somebody that, that was led to the Lord, a pretty savage sort of a bloke. But they, he said that when that, pers that person died, this person that was, uh, must probably was part of the execution thing, he said, I saw the Spirit of God descend upon him. Was that you? Tell, did you tell me? Eh? Tell me t t t tell, uh, that's a good story. <clears throat> I've, mess, I've messed it up. There's a movie called The End of the Spear which talks about some um, uh, missionaries who went into a cannibal tribe in South America somewhere or other. And these missionaries landed and they met these, these uh, cannibals. And they killed the men. They speared them and killed them. But the wives decided to continue to reach this tribe. So the wives went in, and because they were women, they weren't such a threat. They went in and they ended up winning and getting these people saved who had killed their husbands. And the man who had speared her husband said to him, said to her, When I killed him, I saw the angel come and take him to heaven. Saw him cross over. Oh, what was the name of that? Again? The end of the spear. The end of the spear. Eh? That one? Yeah. Anyhow. How many people thought that was a good story? <laughs> See, we, I, I, I'm, I'm saying this today, and I'm not trying to do it for any other reason, but to understand the times that we're living in. Understand that the enemy's trying to get us to go to sleep. The enemy's trying to stop us from, from hearing what, is, you know, what, what God's saying in the hour. We've got to have an ear to hear. That, that prophetic word this morning, in a little while, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Just got to read the, what Jesus said he's going to do in the last days. In the last days, he's going to build a church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. He's going to build a people that know their God going to build a people, I believe, that are going to have such power that the signs and wonders and miracles will, will flow out of us. We'll cast out devils. Amen. We'll, we'll see people touched. Jesus didn't go to the cross for nothing. He didn't suffer the shame. He didn't suffer the humility. He didn't suffer the pain. He didn't, have, he didn't suffer all that he went through. It wasn't easy for him. He, he, he paid it a, an awful price. They plucked his beard. They spat at him. They, they humiliated him. They, they, they stripped him naked and nailed him to a cross. 
hung him there as people jeered him and laughed at him. If you are the Son of God, get yourself off this cross. All, all that sort of stuff. He didn't do that for nothing. He did it because somehow or other he knew that in this time that you and I are living in, that he said, I'm going to pour out my Spirit again on you. I'm going to fill you again with my power. I'm going to fill you again with my anointing. You're going to know what it is to be filled with the power of God. You're going to know what it is to have the surge of the Holy Spirit flowing through your life. And I want to tell you, I've known it and I know that other people here have known it too. When you've prayed for people, you've felt the surge of the Holy Spirit go in and touch those people and they were instantly healed. Bring it back, Jesus. Amen. But what Jesus is saying, I will do it because I never ever change. I'm the same yesterday, today and forever. But will you come back? Will you come back? Father, I ask you today in Jesus' name, help us. Help us find the way. The musicians come. And... Oh God. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Oh, You know, there's sometimes, and I'm going back again to what Tom was prophesying this morning. I think, oh, it's not important that I'm not at the prayer meeting. I'm, I'm a nobody. Yes, you are a somebody. That is a lie that, from the devil. But I never pray at the prayer meetings. That doesn't matter. You do pray. You mightn't pray out vocally, but you're praying. You're praying in the Spirit. You're part of the answer. But all but, you, no, there's no buts. You've got to just get a hold of it, what God wants to do in your life. And we, we want to be part of this end time church. We want to be part of all that we hear and know that it's available to us. So Father, today, I'm asking you to help us. Father, I'm, I'm praying again today that, that Lord, for people that we, we, we know, Lord, as we read Revelation that, that you're, you're watching over the church and you, you talk to the churches there and you say, oh, I see all that you're doing. Yeah, I see all that. But, but there's something that, that's missing. You, you've turned away from your first love or you've done this or you've done that. Father, let us have an ear to hear would you tap us on the shoulder again? Would you speak afresh to us? I believe, Jesus, that you're speaking loud and clear. Just like Roma, as she heard that word, she, she went and sat beside that man. That's opened up something that has not ended yet. It's just the beginning of something. So, Father, I pray that, that all of us here today would, would start a beginning of something that you start to use us. And as we say, God, have your way in my life. Have your way, God. I, I, I want to know you. Where, I, where I've slackened off, where I've, where I've walked away even, where I've, where I've had wrong thoughts, where I've thought I'm not worthy or not good enough or whatever it is. But, oh, God, today, would you please, would you please come again, in particular right now to Global Connections right here, Lord, would you, would you come again? Would you come again to us, my God? Would you touch us afresh? Would you call, put that spirit of prayer back in us, my God? Would you put that spirit of prayer back in us? Oh, God, we need your spirit of prayer. Spirit of worship, come. Come, 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 come. Let's just stand to our feet this, this morning. I just want this morning... I. I all I know is this, is the Bible says one shall put to flight 1,000 and two shall put to flight 10,000. You might say, well, does that mean I've got a devil? I want to tell you, if you haven't got 10,000 devils attacking you, you must surely really not on fire for God. <laughs> yeah, they will be attacking you. Yeah, they will be challenging you. Yes, they will be after you. Yes, they will. There's something about the prayer of agreement. There's something about coming together. There's something about letting the Spirit of God get around our lives. And if you're here today and you say, I want to break out of this rut. I want to break out of this whatever it is. It may not be a big thing. 
may not be very big at all, but but you want to break out. I, I want to break out. I want to break out. I want to be released. I want to be that. Amen. We're just going to open this altar this morning and let the Spirit of God get around your life again. Get a, get a, ah, this is what I feel just then that God, get a fresh touch of the Spirit of God around your life. Get a fresh touch. Let a fresh wind of God's Spirit come over you. Let a, let, let something fresh touch you this morning. Hallelujah. So yes, you can come as we just start to sing that. You are always fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my hope and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship. Thank you.